Burley So. Hello everybody and welcome back to Burley So. I'm your host Purified and today we're going to take another look at SoArt and I'm redoing the getting started video that I did a little while back. I'm not very happy with some of the frame rate issues that I had so we're going to redo that and in the process we'll take a look at another design and a closer look at how to use all the functions and features that SoArt has to offer. And we're going to start off by looking at the toolbar. And the toolbar is pretty basic in the beginning. I mean, you've got your new, and you can open up a file. Uh, and then there's save and save as, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And then the most important in the beginning here is undo. Control Z is the shortcut. And you've got your cut, copy, and paste. And now you can see as we have the workspace open across the toolbar here. And what we're going to do is we're going to open an existing file. It is a dragon that I purchased off the internet that is royalty free. And we're going to take it and turn it into an embroidery design. The first thing that we're going to do to help kind of dumb down the detail is we're going to posterize it. And posterizing will take and reduce small region colors. It'll blend some of the features together. It'll despeckle and overall reduce the number of colors and just stray colors. And it's basically the first place that you start. So I, just, I suggest just playing with the sliders. There's three of them, and the goal is to reduce the colors. And you can look in the bottom right hand corner and see how many you're starting out, out with. This one's I think up in the 70s. And decrease the detail. You have to think about how the design is going to stitch out. And you want kind of color regions that flow together to limit the number of jumps. So once you're satisfied with what your output is, you're gonna do an additional step, which is the image wizard. And this will help you further remove colors and stray, you know, stray color areas, help you despeckle it. And it's very simple, self-contained. All the instructions are right in each step. And your goal is basically to choose the largest value that will allow for you to have a decent output. And you can just compare them side by side. Also, you can see that between some of the different values, there might not be any change at all. So you can just increase it. I usually start at the, you know, the second from last setting and then kind of work my way back. So once you finish up the wizard, you'll have a re uh, image output that is a little bit cleaner. Um, there's still some more work to be done and you're going to want to get close when you're working this way so you'll use the magnification tools. And there's other tools that I want to show you real quick before we get into the actual editing and removing some of these stray colors and if you like now is the time that I would usually reposition and resize and do whatever to so you can rotate you can reflect uh, resize it and you can crop it as well so I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of those and I'll show you the rotate here real quick. And then next you can reflect it. I think I'm going to actually reflect it and that's just basically flipping it on a horizontal plane. And you want to make sure that it's the right size that you want so that it can be an embroidery file that fits in your hoop. So you're going to resize it and I'm just going to go below. I'm going to do this one for a 4 inch hoop and go below 100 millimeters on the smallest axis. And if you want further color reduction, you've got a couple tools here 
to reduce the colors and merge the colors and I'll show you those. You can just set a number value for the color reduction or you can go to merge colors and it'll show you a percentage value of each color and then you can click on the color block on the right and it'll show you where that color is and then you click on it again to come back and this is a good time if you need to do some despeckling you can see what the effect of the despeckle is or kind of getting rid of those odd colors and you can always control Z and undo it so now that we're removing all these little despeckle little speckled areas it's going to make it much easier for us to use our painting tools to go ahead and touch up the design. And you've got a brush, a pencil, a fill, and then there's an eraser and a shape that you can choose from. And then I'll go ahead and hover over those to show you those. And those are, those are what you're going to use a lot of. I've got another video out there where I did a actual, just a hand drawing. You may have seen that one. So you don't even have to import an image if you don't want to. Um, I haven't really done much with the shapes yet. So maybe I'll do a video coming up with the shapes. But here's what those look like. And we're going to go in and we're just going to fine tune our image. There's things that need to be fixed. And we need to get this design proper for embroidery. So to do that, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up zooming in really close and noticing all the flawed areas and you have to make a decision if you want to make it part of the background. Uh, to distinguish them, I usually fill in the background with like a contrasting color just so anything else may pop out that I might have missed. Uh, it's up to you if you want to keep it white. I'm going to have white eyes so I didn't want a white background because when you choose your output options later you can choose a transparent color and that would kind of defeat that purpose. But we're going to zoom in and we're going to go through and we're going to fix uh, all these little edges that are um, not the right color and you can choose colors as simply by using the dropper tool and then clicking on the color that you want to copy and sometimes when you fill here you might miss and fill the wrong region uh, that's where the undo undo tool comes in handy just control Z just like that and some areas are easier to fix with the bucket and some are easier to use uh, the pencil so once you get a feel for it it kind of becomes a snap it's kind of fun it's rewarding um, I think I fixed this guy I probably did it took me maybe an hour you know to, to do this design so it's not very time-consuming but you're just gonna want to go through and get all the colors to match up so that you don't have stray stitches and you also want to fix uh, the areas that you might need to draw in or reshape a little bit and it's pretty easy I mean with the fill tool if you draw a closed area you can fill that area with the fill bucket so you can see the eye here is a little messed up and we can, we can just complete that eye by using the pencil and you can choose different settings on the tools as well to make it a, a larger pencil tip or if you want to use a straight line or a shape like a rectangle or an elliptical but I can go in here and I'm gonna fix this and then we'll go around and we'll do uh, finish up the eye and then we'll do some other details and you'll see how this comes along and I'll go ahead and speed it up here while I do this but I'm going to go ahead and fill in the eye and then I'm going to go ahead and also just do the details and to choose the colors you can either like I said earlier use the eyedropper or there's a color palette in the bottom left hand corner and you can also keep maybe another window open with the image so you can go back and forth and see
you know, the details that might have got wiped away with the color reduction and just kind of keep going through and making your design look as close to the original as possible. And the way you can do that and add detail is by just thinking about how you can add to a solid color block, how you can connect your detail. Some of it you're not going to be able to connect, you know, like these claws here are going to be possibly jumps. You could draw maybe a white line to connect them. So some jumps are acceptable. You just kind of have to plan out your design and your drawing and try to make it as easy on yourself as possible. So once you're happy, you can go and stitch it out and this is the area of the toolbar that you would get that function along with program information and help. And now we're going to take our perfected little guy here and stitch him out and you can click the sew image button and that'll drop down the properties and then you'll be able to click on auto sew image and that'll give you a couple of options as well um, you can first choose what type of stitch you want to use or several that you can play with along as, as well as some other settings that I'm not going to kind of go into right now I just leave it at default for your first couple of tries but you can see that you can choose a transparent color for the background and that's why I kind of do what I did with the crazy off pink there and then now that we've stitched it out you can see all the color blocks and jumps on the right and each block isn't necessarily you have to change the thread or anything like that only on the color changes do you have to change the thread so it's not as bad as it looks it just moves around a lot because there's a lot of different little areas that need to be sewn I mean you don't want to have hundreds to the right there but another way that you can do it as I just cleared out the stitches there is you can do it manually and that I like to do it manually as long as it's not you know so many that you can't possibly get them all or they're really small and they probably shouldn't be like that anyway but when you do it manually you can choose kind of your layering you know sometimes you want other colors on top especially if you have like a fill with a border you probably want the border to go around first in case the fill was underlying the border so you can see I just clicked the stitch order that I wanted manually and now I can go ahead and save it and if you haven't saved the image yet, first you'll get an option to save the image as a PNG, and you can rename that. And then when you finish that or you cancel out, then you'll get the option to save it as an embroidery file. And there's a few different choices. I'm going to choose the PES for brother. And you can scale it here if you like and then change another setting, but we're just going to keep that at default because we've already got it set and you've done your first image in so art and turned it into an embroidery file and you can see a, a little preview in the upper right hand corner you can make that bigger but uh, I, I prefer using a stitch editor and what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna go ahead and make some other changes to this I didn't really like the color scheme so at this point you know you get it where it stitches out pretty good but maybe you want to change the color and you can simply just go in with the fill tool and start playing around a little bit until you get it the way you want it to look and then you've got your perfect output that you're happy with and you've done your own embroidery design from an image so there's our embroidery design I think it looks really good. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out the channel. I've got a lot more videos that show everything from how to use embroidery design software to making different types of projects using your machine. If you like what you saw, please like and share the video. Leave your comments below. I'm Purified, and thanks for watching Burly So.